I'm sitting in Nickel Plate Road number 62, a vintage Pullman passenger car. While it may look pretty both inside and out, 62 has a dark past. Its nickname is the Death Car. It was involved in the deadly train wreck in Wayland, New York in 1943. 18 individuals died in this very car. What happened to cause this terrible accident? Our story first begins in Hoboken, New Jersey on Monday, August 30th, 1943. Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad's train number three, the Lackawanna Limited, is preparing to leave for Buffalo, New York. Train three was a daily first-class passenger train which operated between these two points. It was known for its fast speed and gorgeous scenery along the route. For this run, train three consisted of 11 cars in total. A baggage mail car, the Pullman Parlor Lounge named Princess Margaret, a 12-1 Pullman sleeper named Amola, four passenger coaches, of which Nickel Plate 62 was the sixth situated car, a dining car, and three additional coaches on the rear. The head and power pulling this consist was Delaware Lackawanna number 1151, a 464 Hudson type steam locomotive. Now I know what you're thinking. If this was a Delaware Lackawanna train, why was Nickel Plate 62 on it? See, 62 was a through coach for the Nickel Plate. When the Lackawanna Limited reached Delaware Lackawanna's Buffalo Terminal, it would be handed off to the Nickel Plate. Number 62 and the 121 sleeper Amola were scheduled to be taken west to Chicago by Nickel Plate's train number 5, which made stops along the way at places like Erie, Cleveland, and Fort Wayne. The Lackawanna Limited departed from Hoboken on time at 9.20 a.m. and was due to arrive in Buffalo at 7.05 p.m. However, Train 3 was soon running 30 minutes behind schedule. Between 20 and 25 passengers had purchased tickets and boarded the train at Vestal, Owego, and Binghamton stations. It finally left the last mentioned station at 2.50 p.m. An effort to make up for lost time, engineer James E. Leroy and fireman Theodore Paladine pushed their locomotive to the timetable's maximum allowed speed of 80 miles per hour. As Train 3 reached Elmira, she was 20 minutes behind schedule. They now had 38 minutes to make up the remaining time before their next stop, Dansville. By the time they were passing through Cahocton, 10.37 miles east of Wayland, Engineer Leroy had managed to make up 11 extra minutes. While flying into Wayland, Wayside Signal 3109 displayed proceed, clearing the train through the next block. Shortly after passing the town station, Engineer Leroy, Fireman Paladine, and Fred H. Meinka, Delaware Lackawanna's supervisor of locomotive operations, who was riding with the crew, noticed something was wrong. The in-cab signal was displaying restricting, which contradicted the previous wayside signal. As Leroy looked out the cab, he was in shock. A switch engine on the adjacent siding was moving in the same direction as Train 3. He immediately threw the train brake into emergency. However, his attempt to stop the train short of the siding switch was futile. At approximately 5.23 p.m., Train 3 violently sideswiped extra 1248 at 50 miles per hour. Simultaneously, the extra steam locomotive, 282 number 1248, derailed to the north and stopped upright in line with the track. Steam and water connections and its left cylinder were ripped off as a result. 464 number 1151, derailed after striking 1248 and turned over on its left side. Fred Meinka, who had jumped from the cab before the impact, was crushed to death as 1151 overturned. The first six cars of Train 3 derailed upright and were dragged by 1151. It slid 385 feet away from the point of impact and blocked both east and westbound tracks. Nickel Plate 62, the sixth and last car that was dragged, stopped right alongside engine 1248. Scalding steam, which was escaping from the engine, poured into 62's interior through the windows that shattered from the impact. There were nearly 60 passengers riding in 62 at the time of the accident, some of whom were soldiers. Staff Sergeant Richard L. Franz said, the steam was so dense you couldn't see where you were going. But finally, after breaking a couple of windows with my hands, I found a door and jumped out. I tried to get back in to help an old lady out of the car, but I couldn't get through the steam. It was awful. Corporal Wade Gibson said, I could see the people ahead of me just collapsing in the aisle, their lungs scorched from the steam. 
88% of the passengers who died in a wreck were women. They were sitting in Nickel Place 62, near the rear of the car by the women's lounge. Steam was pouring in from the broken windows on the right. They tried escaping through this hallway, which leads to the vestibule, but were quickly overcome by the steam. Some instead tried to hide under their seats to get away from the steam. For the passengers who did escape, they suffered minor burns. Fifteen other soldiers from other cars banded together by breaking windows and ushering passengers out of the cars to get away from the wreck. Wayland Deputy Sheriff Arthur Clearwater was the first emergency personnel to arrive on scene. He was on his way home when he witnessed a huge cloud of dust and steam driving near the Wayland passenger station. He radioed the Bath Sheriff requesting for physicians and ambulances. The wreck site was gruesome and somber. People were screaming, crying, and in shock from the tremendous crash. Within an hour, ambulances, doctors, and nurses from Bath, Dansville, and Hornell were on scene. Hundreds of townspeople from Wayland had also showed up to help. They not only opened their homes to passengers who escaped from the wreck unscathed, but showed their hospitality. As one local newspaper best described it, the wreck laid open the heart of a small village with all its kindness, its human sympathy, understanding, and its ability to rise in any emergency. An emergency first aid station and canteen were set up in Wayland's Masonic Temple for injured passengers. The severely injured passengers were initially taken to the 17-bed Wayland Hospital until it became quickly overwhelmed. The remaining people were moved to surrounding community hospitals. A total of 500 people were aboard train number 3. 18 people riding in Nickel Plate 62 instantly died. Eight additional people later died from their injuries at local hospitals. 114 other passengers were injured. It took several days for Coroner James Sanford to identify the dead. Many were scalded beyond recognition. The next day, August 31, 1943, railroad work crews were cleaning up the wreck to restore service in the main line. Damaged rails and ties were replaced, and wrecking cranes were brought in to lift and turn over locomotive number 1151. These activities drew a crowd of spectators in the State Route 15 overpass. So what happened? Why was Delaware Lackawanna Extra 1248 moving from the siding onto the main line? Were the wayside or cab signals faulty, or did one train disobey orders? That was something the Interstate Commerce Commission wanted to know too. Their investigation commenced in Buffalo on September 1, 1943. Luckily for the ICC, both engineers and firemen of Train 3 and Extra 1248 weren't seriously injured. All four testified during their investigation, which concluded on October 16th. I have a copy of this report, and with it, we can reconstruct what fully happened, that ill-fated day. At about 4.30 p.m., Extra 1248 backed off the westbound main track onto the Gunlock Chair Factory Industrial Lead to switch cars. This track was 1,362 feet west of the Wayland Passenger Station and branched out into two different tracks. 53 minutes later, 1248 with a cut of six cars began moving onto the lead track towards the main switch. The conductor had been informed by the dispatcher prior to this that train number 3 had passed Bath Station about 10 minutes late. However, he did not pass this information along to the head-end crew as he expected train 3 to be practically on time once it reached Wayland. As 1248 was moving towards the lead track switch, the front brakeman gave engineer Albert Driscoll signals to stop 350 feet east of the switch. Driscoll, for some reason, thought the switch was lined for the main and that he was cleared to proceed on to it. When he was 80 feet east of the switch, he saw the front brakeman stop signal. Driscoll immediately tried reversing 1248, but before it got into motion, train 3 sideswiped it. In Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western's rulebook, it states that inferior trains must clear the time of superior trains by at least 10 minutes. This was clearly ignored by Extra 1248. As it turned out, it had been the practice for train dispatchers to allow inferior trains to operate on the time of first-class trains. The railroad's general superintendent admitted to investigators that during the first eight months of 1943, time on first-class trains was issued to inferior trains both orally and by message on 347 occasions. This also went against their book of operating rules, requiring dispatchers to issue train orders if an inferior train was to use the main line on a first-class train's time. The Interstate Commerce Commission closed their report by saying, 
This accident was caused by failure of operating officers of the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad Company to adhere to and enforce operating rules which are essential to safety. So how did Nickel Plate 62, the only surviving piece of equipment from the wreck, make it into preservation? Well, after the wreck, it was repaired and put back into service by the Nickel Plate. In 1960, 62 was retired at their East 55th Street coach yard in Cleveland. The Midwest Railway Historical Foundation, today called the Midwest Railway Preservation Society, purchased the car in 1963. 62 has since been operating passenger fan trips all throughout the U.S. ever since. Hey everyone, this is Matt, aka Railroad Street. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it interesting and want to see more, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to further support the channel, I have a Patreon and tip jar link in the video's description. In the meantime, I'll catch you next time on the rails.